Hi, so I want to talk about getting this milk machine done. Let's see if I can make it so that you can see a little bit better. All right. Got my pitcher and strainer. I gotta go get a filter. So I'm gonna pull these uh, little caps out and you're gonna hear the uh, suction because there's a vacuum inside of this and I cannot get a, um, I can't get the lid off. You know this because it's it's vacuum sealed so we'll release the pressure and then these can go in the dishwasher now that the pressure is all gone I can get this lid off very easily just like that Okay, I'm going to set that aside. I don't want that falling off. All right, pour the milk from here into my pitcher because I'm still going to strain it even though it's a whole lot cleaner being in the milking machine because it can't get dust and hay. almost a gallon. Part of that's because we did not milk the uh, front teat into the milking machine because it did test with just a little bit of mastitis. So we will keep about a half a gallon and then I'll give the rest of it to the dogs. Um, but this is good milk. And that filtered beautifully. Not even a little speck of dust. That is one perk of the milking machine. And I like the surge milker because it doesn't really take a lot of extra cleaning. I mean, it does a little bit, but it's not bad at all. I can definitely see the why somebody would want longer hoses so that they can set the milking machine to the side and then just have the longer hoses going over to the cow. The problem with that is then you have to wash those hoses because anything that the milk has been touching is going to have bacteria growing. And at least with the surge milker I can get to everything that has had milk touch it. And it's very easy. I can do that just with my household bottle brushes and it's not a problem. Today is the 24th. All right, then I'll give the rest of this to the dogs. They'll enjoy it. Okay, we got the lid off of the uh, surge vacuum pump. Please ignore my messy kitchen. Yeah. All right, so what I have to do now is I have to clean this so I gotta get this pulsator off. Underneath this is the lid gasket. You can just peel that right off. I wanna wash that because it's gonna have milk underneath. And I'm gonna pull these vacuum hoses. So you've got the two, this is the inflation. It has two hoses on it. The thin one here, this is for the vacuum pressure. It causes the uh, inflation in here to squeeze, squeeze, and then the vacuum pulls, sucks the milk out. Then the other tube here, this is where the milk is coming through. The milk comes through and in through these holes and into the tank. So we've got the hoses, the vacuum hoses go to the pulsator, which is attached in the back here to the vacuum pump. So we want to take these off. Don't worry about these right now. They're a little harder, but I will show you how to take them off. We want to get the pulsator off first. And there's no secret. You just have to pull it, muscle it off. And this being soft rubber, sometimes it 
can take all of my strength to get it off. I use a little bit of oil around the, uh, I'll show you. I take a Q-tip and put just a little bit of oil around the outside of these little barbs, I guess they're called, and a little bit around the ed edge here. I don't want to get any into the holes because I don't want that getting into my vacuum pump, but just a little bit around the edges just to make the uh, rubber uh, come out easier. So we've got, this is the pulsator. If you open it, those are the little slides inside, okay? Uh, and there's other people that uh, have done videos on um, how to rebuild these and how to clean them, and they do a really good job. But just for me, basically, I just didn't understand how this worked. This little turn thing here, this regulates the, the speed of the suction. And we just kind of adjusted it to match similar to what our hand was doing. It doesn't adjust pressure, because that's what the vacuum pump does. It just adjusts the speed of how fast it, the pulsating is going. And then we've got a check valve pin from the lid. It just makes sure that no uh, moisture is coming up. So I'm going to set the pulsator and the check valve aside. Now I'm going to work on taking these inflations off. This morning I had to have my teenage son pull it off. But I oiled the outside of it, so it's a lot easier now. Again, you don't want any water getting into the vacuum hoses at all. At all, at all, at all. Okay. So now we've got our stainless steel surge lid. Okay. There is a little bit of a rubber gasket here on the check valve. I'm not worried about that too much because it's not touching any moisture. It's not touching any oil. It's not really touching anything. It's just there to act as a cushion for the pulsator. So I can wash this now. All right, let's talk about these inflation cups. I believe these are called the cups, and then these are called the rubber inflation tubes. I'm going to wash this part right here. Do not wash this, right, because in between the stainless steel and the rubber, that's where the air pressure is going to go. So I don't want water getting in there at all. I am, however, going to take a little rubber hose off. Now I can wash this and let it dry as long as it's totally dry, but don't get water into this. Really, really try hard to make sure that doesn't happen. So I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to do this on all of them. And once it's all cleaned, I'm just going to have it hang and air dry so that it's ready for tomorrow. Okay, it's all separated. I use this little brush, just get it soapy. And I can run it right on through here, just kind of work it. And then I can also stick it through here. Hot water, some soap, just do it real thoroughly, let it dry like that. And just be careful not to get any water in here. So let's go ahead and get started on this. Not so much worried about these vacuum hoses having needing soap. Just give them a good rinse. Let them dry. I'll attach them later on today. Uh, one way I've figured out to test whether or not they're dry is just look through them. And if I see through on the inner walls, if I see any um, moisture, just blow it out. Let it dry. When I first got my surge, I was absolutely scared to death because I just didn't feel like I knew anything about what I was doing.
there's really, you know, there's just, you just kind of have to do it. Um, but <laughs> my poor daughter, and I've got a video of uh, me doing this for the first time on Minnie. I was just so terrified, so scared. Mostly I was scared for Minnie's sake because I didn't want her to um, get her foot, you know, kick the machine that was hanging off of her and um, get her foot caught in the belt and then fall and panic. And she already didn't like the stanchion very much. So, so scared. But she did great. We found that she actually really likes the milking machine, probably for a few reasons. It's very gentle on her, and uh, it gets her done a lot quicker. She doesn't really like hand milking that much. All right. Just gonna get this wet. being careful that this little vacuum spout here is pointing downwards so water can't get up inside. Okay, so what do you do if you do accidentally get water in between the uh, stainless steel cups and the rubber tubing? You'd have to fight with it, but um, just take the rubber inflation off, peel it off. I've never done this before, but I've seen it done. You just peel this off and pull it through, and, and that's going to be hard. Um, yeah, it's going to be hard, um, but that's why you don't do it very often. And then just, you know, clean it really well. Let it dry. And then you're back in business. But to let that moisture stay in there is just going to cause bacteria to uh, fester. And that's just not good. Yeah, bacteria with milk, not a good situation at all. Still a good idea to take the inflation cups out. Um, every so often and make sure that they're all clean just kind of give it an overall inspection make sure it's healthy and um, that the rubber's not cracking and peeling and stuff so um, that you don't have dry rot going on I'm just gonna wash this real quick as long as I'm here I just want to get this done so it's ready for next time all right so I've got my pulsator and over there I've got some uh, oil. I'll put a uh, Q-tip in the oil and just kind of rub it around the edges of each one of these little barb areas that holds the vacuum hose. Just rub it around. It makes it uh, a lot easier to slip the hose on and off. Uh, Just a little bit, and then just a little bit around here. Okay, that's good on that one. <laughs> and personally, I like to put just a little bit of oil on the outside edges of the little places here on the lid. 
Not anywhere that the milk can touch, just to make it easier to slide the rubber on, that's it. So I'm just being careful not to put any oil inside the little hole where the milk is going to go because that's not good. But it does make slipping on the rubber a lot easier. The only other part I'm going to add oil is the outside of this little bark here. Just to make it easier. Okay? If these things are kept oiled every day, cleaned every day right away, the hoses are never a huge problem to get off. If they're not, you may need a strong hubby or a strong son to get them off. Or maybe you're just stronger than I am too. That's fine. I didn't know they came off when I first tried because they were so hard. Just take your time with this. Don't plan on using it the first day you get it. Just kind of, you know, figure it out. Put your thumbs in here while the pressure's running. Just get a feel for, you know, what is it going to feel like on your cow? Excuse me. All right. So that's all oiled. Just going to let it dry for a while. And then we'll slip. Then we'll put everything back together and um, yeah, washing the bucket, that's easy. It's a stainless steel bucket. Wash it with hot, hot water and soap. It's not that big of a deal. If you want to use um, distilled vinegar, you know, that's fine too. I prefer a natural detergent in hot water. It's just how I do things. Um, and so that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. I, I will not put the lid on the bucket until I know it's completely and totally dry because uh, I don't want to risk, you know, organisms growing. And then, like I said, these can just go in the dishwasher. It's not that big a deal. <sighs> Part of my kitchen renovation, I'm hoping to get a 36-inch sink, nice and deep, because this separated sink is a huge pain. I thought I would like it. I don't. Now that I've got a dishwasher, I really prefer the single basin. Just make sure you wash the top inside because milk has been splashing around in there. You know, one person actually said that if you can smell stuff, that smell is created from bacteria. So if you smell milk or anywhere that could have a smell of milk, assume you've got bacteria. And it might even be good healthy bacteria, but that's still, that's something you want to be aware of. Now there are people that have been using a surge milker way longer than I have, and they've got a truly a professional setup. And I'd love to get there someday. The purpose of this is not to tell you how to do it. It's just showing you what I'm doing because I'm still in the beginning stages of learning. And hopefully to make it so that you don't feel quite as lost as I did. It's amazing to me. I looked and looked and looked all over YouTube for a video on how to take a surge milker apart and use it and uh, clean it. How does this work? I could not find one. Not for a surge. Um, I was able to find stuff on all kinds of other milkers, milking machines, but how to hook up pressure gauges on the vacuum pump. Um, and my friend Whitney from Idaho, she was a huge help to me. Um, but it's it's one thing to read what to do, but it's another to actually watch somebody to do it. So this was extremely helpful to me to just figure it out, 
do it um, and not be pressured. Really, don't be pressured. And have some help when you go to use it on your cow for the first time. One other little point I want to make for putting on this pulsator. Put it on so it's supposed to go on or set like that, but it won't lock in like that. You have to turn it sideways. You'll feel it kind of rest in. Then turn it and you'll feel it really grip on that rubber uh, check valve on that you've got. So it won't come off now. But you can't get it off unless you've got it off the bucket. I, I already tried getting it off while it was still on the bucket. It doesn't work. The handle's in the way. So just, you know, take it off the bucket so that it's like that. And then take your hoses off and then turn it halfway. And you can take that off. Put it back on, same way. Turn. Now it's locked on. put these back on. It just slides on there. Slide it onto this little barb here. And that extra oil just really makes things a lot easier. I'm going to leave this off so that it can continue to air out. And then I will attach it right before I connect it to the uh, um, bucket. I've got a little elastic on here. That's just to hold everything up. Grip it like that. Okay. This lid, surge milker lid, is now ready hang up and finish drying and be ready for tomorrow's milking.